I'm going to be in 1 Kings 16, and this is going to be the next episode of God's Game of Thrones. We're looking at King Elah, son of Baasha. Baasha was the last one we talked about last week, King, King Baasha, or Baasha, however you want to pronounce that. But here's a brief, brief description of Elah. He's fourth king of Israel. He reigned two years during the reign of Asa, who, king of Judah, who we've also done a study about. He's son of Baasha of the tribe of Issachar. His name means terebinth or an oak. His prophet is Jehu. And you'll find him in verses in the in First Kings sixteen six through fourteen. And the topic we're going to talk about, along with the story of King Elah, is why not to drink. Why should you, as a Christian, not drink alcohol? First Kings sixteen eight says, in the twenty and sixth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Elah the son of Baasha to reign over Israel in Tirzah two years. So Elah reigned only two years. So that's the first thing about why you shouldn't drink. It cut his career short. You lose, you can lose your career. Maybe if he didn't drink so much, he could have extended that. I mean, there are many people that start drinking and lose the position that they once held. It causes them to come in late to work. It causes them to be drowsy on the job. I was training a, dr a drunk guy once, working in about 110 degrees, and he sweated so much he couldn't even see. He was sluggish. He was lazy. He lost his job. And I've seen many people like that. What if Elah never drank? I mean, the prophecy that the house of Baasha was going to be demolished was set in stone. It was set in stone that the line of Baasha would be wiped out but maybe not within the first two years of Elah's reign. Maybe if he lived for the Lord, he could have prolonged his days a little bit. In Psalm fifty-five twenty-three, it says, But thou, O God, shalt bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. So somebody that's overly wicked, they're not going to live out half their days. In Ecclesiastes seven seventeen, it says, Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou, be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? Eli saw the outcome of Jeroboam, of King Jeroboam. He saw the outcome of, of his father, Baasha. He knew they walked in the ways of sin. He would have had access to Proverbs because Solomon was already dead and gone, who wrote Proverbs. He would have had access to Proverbs thirteen fifteen, which says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. He would have had access to verses like Proverbs 20 and verse 1. It says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So why did he do the things he did when he had access to the Proverbs that told him how stupid it was? The same reason drunks today do the stuff they do. They see how it affected their fathers. I mean, they know it is wrong in the scriptures, but they do it anyway. Many of them are jobless. They lost their career. Many of them lost their marriage. Many of them are poor and living in a shack somewhere. This was all because they wanted to drink themselves drunk. And Eli had his reign cut short because of alcohol. You're going to see soon about Eli and his alcohol problem. Men have their career cut short many times because of drinking. Why did Eli get killed? Maybe if he was sober, he could have fought his way out of death. Alcohol causes you to lose out on things that you, you would have had. Maybe extra life, an extra, extra days to your life. It also causes you to let your guard down. In 1 Kings 16, 9 through 10... It says, And his servant Zimri, captain of half his chariots, conspired against him. As he was in Tirzah, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, steward of his house in Tirzah. And Zimri went in and smote him and killed him. In the twenty and seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his stead. So the servant Zimri comes in and, and wipes out Elah and says, King me. He's, he's taken over now. He takes the throne. 
Maybe Eli could have defended his throne better if he wasn't under the influence. Ephesians 5.18 says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. If you get drunk, your level of good judgment goes down. In Hebrews or in Habakkuk 2.15, it says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Many times a person wants to get you to drink so that they can see your nakedness. You lose your morals when you get drunk. I had a guy tell me he got drunk. He cheated on his wife. He said he never would have done it if he was sober. There have been men who killed somebody while they were drunk. They never would have done it sober. And when you get drunk, you think you can fight anybody. You're like Logan Paul. You think you can beat up Floyd Mayweather when you get drunk. If you get drunk, you let your guard down. You take off the whole armor of God and you forget where you put it at. The devil shows up and you, you won't be able to find it in time. You can't even see. You can't even walk a straight line. So how can you walk the good and narrow way if you're drunk? You say, well, I've drunk alcohol for years and it hasn't hurt you yet. But what about all the people in the world that it's hurt and the families? You let your guard down when you drink. And next, you become less than a servant. You become like less than a servant. In 1 Kings sixteen ten through 11, it says, And Zimri went in and smote him and killed him. And the twenty and seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his stead. That means he, he took over the reign. He went in there, assassinated him, and took, took over. And it came to pass when he began to reign, as soon as he sat on his throne, that he slew all the house of Baasha. He left him not one that pisseth against the wall, neither of his kinsfolks, nor of his friends. So it's a shame that the king got killed by his own servant. That's how alcohol starts out, because you think you're in control of it. I bet Eli thought he was in control of Zimri, but the tables turned, and he was no longer in control. You think you're in control of alcohol, then it gets in control of you, and it starts running things. You become addicted. You begin to rely on it. In First King or First Chronicles, excuse me, First Corinthians six twelve. It says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Paul talked about not being brought under the power of anything. He wanted to be led by the Spirit. You can become a servant to sin. The alcoholic gets to a point where he is in bondage to the drink. At one time, he drank for fun, social drink, drank here and there, didn't even get drunk. One day... Tables turned, it began to control him. He becomes even less than a servant because he now serves what he thought he was in control of at one point. I've seen men ask people for money and then go right to the beer store. Instead of buying food or using the money for rent, it goes off to their master, the drink. It starts out fun. Eli was king for a while, living in Tirza. He probably had a nice chariot. He probably had a nice little vacation home. He lived like a king, literally. Yet he was in worse shape than a beggar, and he becomes less than a servant. And next, it leads to more sin and broken families. So you can lose your career. It leads to more sin and broken families. In 1 Kings sixteen twelve. Thus did Zimri destroy all the house of Baasha, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake against Baasha by Jehu the prophet. So the prophecy was fulfilled. Baasha had his house destroyed, just like Baasha destroyed the house of Jeroboam. And Baasha didn't learn from Jeroboam's mistakes. And Eli didn't learn from his father's mistakes. 1 Kings sixteen thirteen through 14 For all the sins of Baasha... And the sins of Elah, his son, by which they sinned, and by which they made Israel to sin, and provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. Notice they made other people to sin too. Now, the, did you notice that the only people that want to be around a drunk is other drunks? So I imagine that Elah got all of his servants to drink, got all the people to drink, you know, probably had parties promoting it, probably was okay with the commercials and the billboards, and making it look cool because he didn't want to be drinking alone. 
Now the rest of the acts of Elah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Elah had a drinking problem. He provoked the Lord to anger with all of his sin. And I guarantee you, if he did not drink, it would have, it would have cut his sin in half. Drinking alcohol leads to more sin, as we've already talked about. And in Eli's case, it led to a broken, busted up family. And Zimri killed the house of Baasha and Elah because Elah wasn't sober enough to defend himself or fight back or anything. Alcohol wrecks homes. And most times when the man drinks, he will influence the son to drink. Most times when the man drinks, then he influences his wife to drink. And I know grown men that give their young boys alcohol who probably aren't even 21 yet. And that could be the first step to failure for his life. There is darkness in the drink. But when the real king of kings shows up, there will be no more alcohol all that junk is getting stomped on by white horses and burned in the fire that he brings with him.